The story of Louis Zamperini, an Olympic runner who became a World War II hero, was first brought back to the public's attention with Laura Hillenbrand's 2010 book, Unbroken. This was followed by the 2014 movie of the same name, directed by Angelina Jolie. In the war, Zamperini served as a bombardier on B-24 Liberators. During a search and rescue mission in the Pacific in May 1943, the B-24 he was on experienced mechanical failure and crashed into the ocean. Eight of the 11 men on board were killed. Zamperini, along with the pilot and the tail gunner, survived the crash. However, after 33 days stranded at sea, tail gunner Francis McNamara succumbed to dehydration and starvation. Louis Zamperini didn't grow up a practicing Christian and he had never prayed. But as hope was fading on the raft and death was almost certain, Zamperini turned to God. In a CBN interview, he said, That's all you do in a raft. I don't care if you're an atheist or what you are. When you reach the end of your rope and you've got nowhere else to turn, your atheism isn't going to help you. You're going to turn and look up. And so that's all we did on the raft was pray morning, noon, and night. While on the raft, Zamperini promised that if God spared his life, he would serve him forever. After spending a total of 47 days at sea, Louis Zamperini and pilot Russell Allen Phillips were picked up by the Japanese and were held for two years in Japanese prisoner of war camps. As a POW, Zamperini was beaten, starved, humiliated, deprived of water, and had his nose broken. He was forced to race Japanese runners and was beaten for winning. The most ruthless of the prison guards he encountered was Sergeant Mutsuhiro Watanabe, who the POWs nicknamed the Bird. Watanabe was so relentless in his torture of the prisoners, especially Zamperini, that it left Zamperini with nightmares and in a constant state of dread. The bird tormented Zamperini and beat him on a daily basis. Humiliation was also a daily occurrence. The bird forced Zamperini and other prisoners to do push-ups over filthy latrine troughs until they collapsed with their faces in the excrement. On other occasions, he lined up U.S. officers and ordered U.S. enlisted men to go down the line punching them in the face. Once, he sent for Zamperini and nine other officers. They put away their tools in the camp's leather shop and showed up at Watanabe's office. He felt five minutes was too long to wait for them, so he began swinging a big leather belt with a large steel buckle on the end. He struck each of the officers across the face about four times each. Another grotesque cruelty the bird enjoyed was making prisoners lick the soles of the shoes of fellow POWs after they came out of the maggot-infested toilets. After the war ended and the camp was liberated, Mutsuhiro Watanabe, who had been dubbed the bird by the prisoners, went into hiding and was one of General Douglas MacArthur's 40 most wanted war criminals in Japan. Louis Zamperini returned home a hero, but he faced a new battle in the form of PTSD. I had nightmares every night about the bird since the war and after the war, Louis later recalled. Though he was free, the bird was still tormenting him. He dreamt of revenge and hatred filled his heart. He believed the only way to free himself was to kill the bird. In order to cope with his PTSD, Louis turned to alcohol, and as a result of his heavy drinking, his 1946 marriage to Cynthia Applewhite was on the verge of imploding. That's all I did, he said. I just figured the more I drank, the better I'd sleep at night. I was out every night drunk. My wife refused to go with me, and she decided on a divorce. They had a young daughter together named Sissy, and in one last effort to save their marriage, Cynthia asked Louis to attend a 1949 crusade with her led by evangelist Billy Graham. After listening to Graham's message, Louis made the decision to turn to Christ and to honor the promise he had made to God while stranded on the raft at sea. That night, his nightmares about the bird ended forever, and he replaced hate with something more powerful, forgiveness. Three years later, in 1952, Louis Zamperini traveled back to Japan to confront many of the former guards he faced as a POW. They were now being held as war criminals at Sugamo Prison. He addressed his former captors, and he forgave them. However, he never got the chance to confront the bird, Mitsuhiro Watanabe, who was still in hiding. Watanabe evaded arrest and was never put on trial for his mistreatment of POWs. He spent seven years hiding in the mountains above Nagano, Japan. Most people believed he was dead, including Zamperini and Watanabe's own mother, who had built a shrine for him. In 1952, all charges against Watanabe were dropped. The man who had made the lives of so many POWs unbearable during the war would go on to become wealthy selling life insurance in Japan. And though Louis Zamperini never got to forgive Watanabe face to face, 
he wrote him a letter. To Mutsuhiro Watanabe, As a result of my prisoner of war experience, under your unwarranted and original punishment, my post-war life became a nightmare. It was not so much due to the pain and suffering, as it was the tension of stress and humiliation that caused me to hate with a vengeance. Under your discipline, my rights not only as a prisoner, but also as a human being were stripped from me. It was a struggle to maintain enough dignity and hope to live under the war's end. The post-war nightmares caused my life to crumble, but thanks to a confrontation with God through evangelist Billy Graham, I committed my life to Christ. Love replaced the hate I had for you, and Christ even said, forgive your enemies and pray for them. As you probably know, I returned to Japan in 1952 and was graciously allowed to address all the Japanese war criminals at Sugamo Prison. I asked them about you and was told that you probably had committed harikiri, which I was sad to hear. At that moment, like the others, I also forgave you and now I would hope that you would also become a Christian. In a 1997 interview with 60 Minutes, Watanabe defended himself and expressed no remorse for his actions. He instead reasoned that his behavior had been normal for a prison camp and that he treated the prisoners strictly as enemies of Japan. However, even fellow guards at the camp disliked him due to the sadistic level of violence he inflicted on the prisoners. During the interview, when he was shown a picture of Louis Zamperini, Watanabe replied, I wasn't acting under direct orders. Because of my personal feeling, there was no way to be friends with him. Mr. Zamperini is a well-known figure. He was a well-known figure. If he says he was beaten by Watanabe, it's possible such incidents occurred in the camp because of my personal feeling at the time. In 1998, Louis Zamperini was in Nagano, Japan to carry the torch at the Winter Olympics. While there, he tried to meet the bird, Mutsuhiro Watanabe. However, Watanabe refused. The man who once caused Zamperini so much pain and humiliation was now afraid to face him. Zamperini had brought the letter with him and someone took it and promised they'd get it to Watanabe. It's unclear if Watanabe ever read it. He died in 2003 at age 85. I think the hardest thing in life is to forgive, Zamperini later said. Hate is self-destructive. If you hate somebody, you're not hurting the person you hate, you're hurting yourself. Forgiveness is a healing. It's a real healing. After devoting his life to God, Zamperini established Victory Boys Camp in California, a nonprofit that helped troubled youths find their purpose in life. He also became a Christian speaker and traveled around the country sharing his story. Louis Zamperini passed away from pneumonia in 2014, the same year the story of his life made it to the big screen. If you enjoyed this video on Louis Zamperini's path to forgiveness, including his letter to the bird, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Anchors away, my friends.